Looks like it's me. <laughs> okay, so you'll be you'll be the gym. So let me explain the game. I wasn't sure. Sure, what was happening then? It's okay. Neither was I. So <laughs> Slaughter is a is a horror movie making game. So unlike other role playing games where you are very attached to your protagonist, the opposite is true in this game. You are actively as as an actor trying to kill off your characters, because as you kill them off. <coughs> the next character you draw on will be a member of the cast. You'll, you'll, they will become the focus of the of the uh, of the movie. They get a little bit tougher and a little bit more dangerous, uh, but also that drives the storyline. Um, as best horror movies have complex storylines, the idea uh, is to is to play to trope, and so everything in this game is a trope. And the idea, uh, the, the goal of the GM is to mix and match those tropes to sort of drive the story in interesting ways, while Keeping to the general, you know, structure of the horror movie genre that you're playing in, but also throwing in curveballs and listening very carefully for the curveballs that all the players are going to be bringing in. Um, it's not to try and create the most absurd horror movie ever, unless you want to go down that direction. It's not to necessarily create something which makes everyone feel really, really uncomfortable, and that's a really big rule in this game. If anything starts to make you feel uncomfortable, just push the big red button on the table. Just go. Eh. And we fade that one to black. You know, we treat it differently. It's the shadow. It's the whatever. But I think most, knowing most of you, you'll you'll take great relish in having yeah. things wiped out. So I'm not expecting too much of that. Um, so let me explain the rules. Um, the game is designed so that the characters will move from being a supporting cast member, an extra, to being a protagonist. Hopefully, in less than than a minute. So as you kill them off, you just reach out. You see across here, we've got a bunch of the cast. Now, this particular deck is called Surviving the Horde. It's a zombie movie. It's aliens. It's any movie where there's a huge horde or swarm of something outside that wants to get inside and kill you or take you over or just do something. I'm thinking of the Piper movie. The, bir the, rats. the Birds is, an, is, a, is, a, is one example of that. That's right. So there's, there's Rats is another one. Um, anyone ever seen Rats? Yeah. That wasn't a good movie, was it? No. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was thinking of the Piper movie, the one yeah. where he controls all the rats with his flute. That, I don't know that one. I'll have to watch that one. But anyway, you get the idea. So these cards are, uh, you can flip them over depending on whichever gender you want. That's fine. Uh, when we actually launch the full it's game, we'll, we'll also have uh, a larger array of characters to choose from. If we were playing a group like this in a, in a Horde game, you'd probably have... 2.5 characters per player or slightly more because they have, tend to have a fairly high casualty rate. But here we've got a bunch of archetypes. We've got the scientist, the soldier, everyday Joe, or everyday Joe, uh, <laughs> driver, athlete, fix-it guy, fix-it gal, uh, the teen, the kid, and the caregiver. Uh, they're pretty strong archetypes for these sort of games. So what you do to start the game is you as players would just go around the table and you go, I want to be the scientist. You put it in front of yourself. And then you would grab the floor deck, and you can take, you can look through this deck, and you choose a floor. Now, I better also, because I've got all the cards in front of me, I'll just, um, I'll use this one as a demonstration. Move the game traders thing over here. So you take your scientist, you put your scientist there. Um, you would then uh, grab your floor deck. Where did I put those floors? There. Mm -hmm. You quickly look through them, and you go, okay, uh, my scientist floor is old and decrepit. Good job. <laughs> uh, you would then go through and you would be able to pick up the talent cards. And you'd look through the talent cards and you'd, you'd say... Left one behind. Uh, that's okay. Let's take a look at that one. Um, she has a calming influence. Oh. Uh, so old, okay. an older scientist that has yeah. a calming influence. Yes. Now, <laughs> then the game master, or we call them the director, would give you a choice, or maybe not, of hooks. There are more. So, yes. So, yep. so, what you'll have there is the ability to... Get rid of those ones. Um, for example, hers might be... She has the antidote. And that is a hidden card. You only reveal that when you want to bring it into play. So, it, these cards really connect the group within each other. There's a lot of personal interactions with them. They're also, by far and away, as you move through the game, the most powerful cards. Some of them can only be given out after <coughs> a certain number of deaths or after a certain condition has been met. But that's up to the Game Master to make those offers. That's it. That's your character. 
If you had been culpable in another character's death, you also get to put whatever dice along there. So let's say she had previously been culpable in somebody else's death. Gets a d6 there. That's character creation. Oop, and I uh, me. If she had been uh, culpable in two characters' deaths, you get two d6. If culpable in three characters' deaths, you get a d8 on there as well. That's it. During the game, you're going to have these things called challenges, and the challenges are any situation where there is an element of the unknown or tension or luck. Something, usually, something bad is going to happen. It doesn't have to be something violent. It can be. It can also be between the two player characters, or between player characters and the extras, whatever. In a challenge, what you do is you build a dice pool, and the dice pool is built by looking at the cards that you've got available. You always start your dice pool with the appropriate mind, body, or soul attribute. Mm -hmm. Just one of those dice. So let's say the scientist was um, uh, wrestling a undead bear. Oh no. Okay. Calm so, the bear. Calm the bear. <laughs> so, well, yes. So what you do is you look down, here's how you build the dice pool. You look down, you go, okay, she's trying to calm the bear, it's probably soul. So she would take a d6 for her soul. Then, uh, if um, she had any madnesses, which we'll get to in a bit, uh, you'd apply any of the bonuses or negatives from that. There is the option of using either the flaw or the talent. So maybe this person would say, uh, when old trusted methods are employed, she would go, I remember going bear hunting, with bear trapping with my dad <laughs> back in the good old days, mm. and I am going to sing to the bear. <laughs> Because that's what closes uh, the bear. bear lullaby. Now, here's the difference. You notice that this dice on this card has got a blood splat on it. Mm -hmm. It's a D8. If the dice has a blood splat on it, you have to slaughter the card, which means you're basically turning it over, getting rid of it, or turning it to the side, is, is the way that I normally do it. That means that you can use that, that D8 in your dice pool, but you cannot do it anymore. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean she's no longer old and decrepit she's still old and decrepit <laughs> it's, it's, it's just that that, that, trope, that trope has been maximized you've now just forgotten everything <laughs> well no she's just it's, it's just not useful the the the, the, the reason is, the reason that know. you slaughter a trope is in a horror movie if if the alcoholic is constantly using the booze to defeat the monsters as mm. we saw in independence day with you know flying mm. it becomes boring mm. so they're still an alcoholic or they're still old and decrepit but as a narrative force in the movie it's no longer valid it's just bores us um, now she may decide because she's a scientist um, she if, if you can argue that you can use one of these dice down here um, as part of your character she, she might say I also know bear physiology because you know my father used to show us how to go and capture bears because he was a bear scientist and Whatever. Like and then cuff. she may really not want to have to wrestle this. <laughs> so, so she'll use the D8. So there, there's the dice pool. Was there, what was her thing? Antidote. No, that's not going to come into play. And these are splattered as well. They're splattered as well. You don't use them. So her total dice pool for that is a D8, a D8, and a D6, which is pretty good. Bear being a bear is probably dangerous. Um, actually, yeah, he's, a, he's an undead bear, so it'll make him dangerous. <laughs> and he's probably got some kill... Uh, he's got a strength of D10, and he's probably got some killer claws as well, so that'll give him another D10. So there's the bear's dice pool. Let's roll. So you roll the dice. In this case, I got a 6, a 5, and a 2. You roll those dice for the scientist. 13. No, you are only looking for the highest dice. That's a 6. So, you got an 8. Ooh. So what's actually happened here is because you have the <laughs> highest dice, <laughs> yes, and you got to sing to it. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie bear. You go out of the woods to do. Exactly. I don't want a bear surprising me. I'm not going to picnic. Picnic involves eating. It's a bad call for that song. <laughs> what then <laughs> happens? <laughs> sleeping zombie bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What then? Sure, sure. What then happens is somebody narrates the outcome of that scene. So in this case, the bear has been pacified. Um, uh, technically, it could be that the bear's soul has been reduced by one, making it passive. Um, honestly, in that case, it's probably a mook bear, because uh, that's yeah. that's a mook bear. <laughs> in which case, you've got the bear. You've got the bear under control. So somebody would narrate that. Now, that could be the person who rolled the dice, or the way that I like to play it is just go around the table and let everyone narrate, have a turn of narrating the scenes. 